Hey everyone, for today's tip, I'm gonna talk about sRGB versus Adobe RGB, tell you which team I bat for, and I already know I'm gonna make a few of you upset. So guys, in the photo world, there's some folks that uh, swear by shooting with Adobe RGB. There's other ones that swear by shooting with sRGB. Now, I'm not gonna get into the specifics of each one. Honestly, there's so many different places on the internet where you can find uh, details regarding color space. So if you're really looking forward to, the, you know, looking into the technicalities of those, by all means, go check those out. What I wanna basically do is I wanna let you know what my opinion is and what I'm doing myself and what's worked for me. So basically you got these three color spaces that are the most popular. You got sRGB, Adobe RGB, and Profoto RGB. And if I go into Lightroom, if I wanna export a file and I come into the export, I have under file settings, it says what color space do I wanna put it, you know, do I wanna export it in? And there's those three choices. Now, here's the thing. Um, you can choose one of these other choices. And like I said, I won't get into the technicalities, but essentially they are gonna give you a, a larger color spectrum. So you have more color space to work with. But here's the thing, guys. I use sRGB for everything. I've used sRGB for everything for the last four or five years of doing this. Um, I, I at one time I used to shoot an Adobe RGB and then I would try to convert to sRGB or I would convert to it. But then I, I just got to the point where everything was sRGB. The, the printers that my clients were using, the monitors that most of us are using. I mean, a few of us might have Adobe RGB color spectrum monitors out there, but the majority of us, you know, just like my MacBook, we're looking at sRGB. I, I thought, why am I shooting and why am I trying to manage color profiles or color spaces that I, I'm not even looking at, that my clients aren't even seeing, that the printers that I'm sending my images to can't even handle. And, and so I decided to go ahead and just do everything in sRGB. So again, I, my camera, when I'm shooting it, it's sRGB. When I import into Lightroom, it's already sRGB. When I export out, it's sRGB. When I go into Photoshop, it's sRGB. Now, if you ever have uploaded a file to the internet um, and it looks great on your monitor in Lightroom and then you bring it into the internet and you put it on a website or you upload it to Facebook and the colors look terrible, I can pretty much guarantee that it's because you export it out as Adobe RGB. You might've shot it as Adobe RGB and then export it as Adobe RGB and your browser can't read it. it it's, it's basically clipping a bunch of the colors and it's trying to guess what those colors are and it, it did, did a terrible job and that's why it, it messed it up for you. So again, this is the part, like I said, I'm gonna make a few of you mad, but just start shooting in sRGB, especially if you're having those issues. The only time I could see um, really taking advantage of Adobe RGB is if you shot in Adobe RGB, if you had a monitor that read Adobe RGB and you had a printer at your disposal that printed in Adobe RGB, then yeah, maybe you can take advantage of that and get that little extra color space. But folks, the majority of us, 99% of us, aren't have don't have those things. We don't have that combination. So why worry about it? So again, I know I'm gonna get the haters out there and I know I'm gonna get people that are telling me I'm doing it all wrong, but I shoot an sRGB, I export an sRGB, my color space of choice is sRGB. Thanks for tuning in guys.